Okay, what you're looking at is a, a flag, and what I want to demonstrate here is a after image. So I want you to stare right at the little dot in the center of the flag. Don't take your eyes off the dot, don't blink, and don't move your eyes around the screen. Just keep them focused right on that dot. I know your eyes are going to start to hurt, they start to dry out, but then you get until I do this, and all of a sudden you have the American flag, red, white, and blue. Why? Because the American flag is red, white, and blue, and red is the opposite of green, and blue is the opposite of yellow, and black, white, is the opposite of black. So you have a picture here of all three different types of after images, a color after image for yellow and green, and the after image for black and white. Stare at the little black dot. Don't take your eyes off the black dot until I click and now you see it. Now, some of you will see it immediately and uh, it'll disappear. Keep blinking. If you blink your eyes, it'll come back. But really, neurons and the after image will depend on how fast your particular brain refreshes. And so some of you will see it longer than other people will see it. Again, differences in people. Here's a picture. This is just a black and white image after image. Stare right at the four dots that are going vertical in the center of this supposed face. Keep staring at those dots. Don't take your eyes off the dots. Don't blink. Don't move your eyes around. Keep staring right at the dots until I... And there you have now what most people would consider a picture of Jesus. And if you blink, it should come back with light, slighter, lighter, um, but then it'll slowly disappear, and each time you blink, it'll become lighter and lighter until you can't see it anymore. That's an after image. Here's one that the people in the United States will recognize right away. Uh, stare right at the uh, red cross in the center of the face. Keep staring at the red cross. Do not take your eyes off the red cross. Don't blink. I know your eyes start to hurt because it, um, they're starting to dry out. Just look at that red cross until I do this, and there here you have a picture of President Obama. Right? Uh, this one is really interesting because this one is an actual, like a negative. When we used to have print for, for um, photographs, you'd have a negative and then you'd make the negative into a picture. Well, this is a negative. Look at the white dot right in the center. Keep staring right at the white dot. Don't take your eyes off the white dot. Leave your eyes on the white. Don't blink. Don't move your eyes around. You've got a lot of different shades of blue and shades of pink and shades of yellow. And so when I click, now you have a beautiful face of a singer. I, my um, students said it's a singer. I can't remember the name of the person who that is. Right? So again, an after image. But this was a really good color after image. Here's one. Keep following the little dots around and around and around and around in a circle, and you got a little, you got a pink, pink dots going back, you know, turning off and on. Look at the cross. Stare right at the cross. As you're looking at the cross, the little green dot, dot, the little pink dot that turns around and around turns green, right? And then if you stare at it long enough and don't blink and don't move your eyes, the pinks disappear and only the green is left over going back around and around and around and around. So that is, I mean, how can you trust your eyes if, uh, if they're so easily, if your brain is so easily deceived, right? And then we have this picture, which is a JPEG picture. There's no movement in this picture. Uh, JPEGs don't move, but you think that you see a movement. You move your eyes, but it's stationary. You move to look at where it is that's moving, and it's not moving anymore, and then something else is moving, so you look to see that place. And... You, again, your eyes are being deceived. This is a perceptual distortion or illusion. Uh, what we have here, let me start down here, right here at this little spot and go up, 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 and end up right back where I was. That's impossible. You can't go up and up and up and end up back where you were, where you started. You have to be higher than where you started. Same thing happens if you go down. So I can down, 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 and end up right back where I am. The artist knows exactly what to do to make this perception distortion, to make it an illusion. This one right here is great. Escher was an excellent artist. I have pictures of Escher in my in my office at school, 
Uh, this one is a picture of a waterfall. I'd love to have this house. Waterfall with a water wheel. If you had a waterfall with a water wheel like this, you would be able to produce your own electricity and stay off grid. That was, that'd be, I could save lots and lots of money that way. But the problem is that this water is then going uphill, uphill to the waterfall and then falling back down again, uphill to the waterfall and going back down again. How did he do that? If you look at this pillar right here, it's just not, it's just not right. It's just not right. And he has all kinds of perception distortions like this. And actually in this picture, these plants down here are underwater plants, which means this whole place is actually underwater. There's a waterfall underwater. And this poor lady over here, she's hanging her clothes to dry underwater. So that's Escher for you. This is a great illusion. Ambiguity. There's two different things here that you see. Uh, I like margaritas, so I see a margarita glass, but then you also see two people looking at each other. Two people looking at each other. This is a, a bunch of ducks, mallards. Uh, the mallard males are very pretty. The female is just brown. Uh, and this is the relationship in nature. Almost all males are the pretty ones, have the best coloring, and the females are pretty boring coloring. And yet in humans, we try to make our women be beautiful by putting on all kinds of makeup for them. We're the ones that are supposed to be the good looking ones uh, in nature. But this is a bunch of mallards. Well, here's the mallard duck. She's looking off to the left. And here's a pelican. The pelican is looking off to the left. And then there's a sandpiper. It's looking off to the left. A, a seagull that's looking off to the left. A cute little duck that's sort of pedaling off to the left. Here's a, I'm not sure what kind of duck this is, but it's obviously a male because it's got all kinds of pretty coloring on it, looking up as if it's looking for food, I guess, somebody from uh, the, uh, maybe there's a pier and they're throwing food for it. So it's looking for food. And this guy's obviously, oh, give me that food, give me the food. <laughs> he's, looking, he's like walking on water. Give me the food, give me the food, looking up in the air. And here he is again, looking up in the air, there's the, the beaks, right? He's looking up in the air saying, give me food, give me food. But what if I instead showed you in f at first the squirrel looking to the right, the raccoon looking to the right, the possum, opossum, looking to the right, the rabbit looking to the right. And then what is this? Is this a rabbit sitting on its haunches looking to the right? Or is it a duck looking up to the left? So this is an ambiguous picture. And I asked my students, which do you see? And they tell me a duck or a rabbit. I say, no, you don't. What you see is a whole bunch of gray and black and white on a screen, and you're interpreting it as a duck or a rabbit. <laughs> so now here's another one. Your eyes, this box right here, depending on if you just look right here, and all of a sudden, if you keep staring at it long enough, the box changes shape. It actually moves. And once it moves, it's really hard to get it to stay in one position. Your mind doesn't know how to relate to this list of lines, and so it's popping back and forth in two possible dimensions. And again, our brains are so easily confused if we don't get the proper information. This is called the Herman grid. Again, we have uh, little gray, little gray blobs that look like they're in between each one of these black squares and yet when you look for it it's not there and then you look there they are again and you look back to where they they just disappear again our brains somehow being distorted